St. Lucia is a small island renowned for its hospitable people and its breathtaking natural beauty. The relationship between the people and the mountains, rivers, beaches, coral reefs and plant and animal life is the most significant contributor allowing the island to thrive into the future. In a disaster-prone region of the world like the Caribbean, which relies heavily on its natural resources for tourism and agriculture, this is an increasingly fragile relationship. The very thing we sell, our strongest assets are the environmental assets. Um, if you look at what's happened down in Sufra, we appreciate very much the need and the strength and the value of environmental assets uh, for the continued growth of tourism. And if uh, we compromise on any of those uh, values, then what will happen is that 20 years from now we will not have an industry because the very thing we sell are the environmental assets, the coral reefs, the uh, wonderful beaches. To better manage the way St. Lucians relate to the natural landscape around them, the government of St. Lucia, through the Department of Sustainable Development, set out to build a system to manage environmental information and to use it to help create possible images of the future of the island from an environmental perspective. Through this system, the results from consultations between key agencies in the country were used as the basis for envisioning environmental scenarios of the next 10 to 50 years. The scenarios presented are based on current trends and physical observations from around the country. In an effort to accelerate action to improve how St. Lucians live and relate to the land and sea around them, the most extreme scenarios, some of which can be planned for, are woven into the story of a likely challenging future for the island. St. Lucia was undoubtedly more pristine centuries ago when Arawak's canoes brushed up onto the shores of an island brimming with lush forest-covered volcanic peaks. The Arawaks called it Ionola, meaning the island of the iguanas. Providing easy access to the ocean and reliable food, these early settlers lived along its shores and used them as points of significant exchanges and trade. This remained so among later settlers, including the Kalinago, European colonialists, and people from Africa and other parts of the world who worked on sugar plantations under the rule of Europe. In 1979, when St. Lucia became completely independent from the British, the population of the country was around 115,000. Today, after 40 years, St. Lucia's population has grown to approximately 180,000. With this change, settlements established under colonial rule expanded near the sea with at least six towns located along the coast. As the pressure for new housing increased, more people started building higher into the mountains. Similar to people from each part of the world, the way St. Lucians use the land and sea to support daily living is dependent on what happened in the past, the climate, and the ability to change and adapt to events of the future. What we do now will be based on our understanding of the future and whether we care about the people who will live in that future. Scientists warn no part of the world will be spared from the climate crisis. The consequences for nature and humanity are sweeping and severe. The government of St. Lucia has recognized the need for action to address and adapt to changes in the future environment. This, in fact, is the basis for sharing skills and educating people to better manage the land and coastal areas which sustain life in the country. The government's major commitment to sustainable living in St. Lucia is evidenced by its signature to three key United Nations environmental conventions. The United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification, and the United Nations Convention on Biodiversity. The information presented in this video are in segments according to selected issues covered under each convention.
It links the past with challenges in the present and possible interrelated scenarios of the future and the need for rapid adaptation to live in the future.